טוב, אוקיי, okay, בעזרת השם. So now we start פרק ג', פסוק ט'. So we had a beautiful understanding of uh, the last few psukim from the Gaumi Vina and uh, from the Malvim. And the pasuk now goes into the structure or the infrastructure or the surrounding that Shalomo HaMelech put in place in order to secure that level of connection. Pasuk Tet. Apirion Asalo HaMelech Shalomo Me'atze HaLevanon. King Solomon, he made himself, Apirion is like a castle of, of wood, from, from the roof from Lebanon. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what is it? What, what is it, Apirion? Apirion is like a, it's, it's like a mita, like a... Uh, a bed? Like a bed, like a bed. Okay. Yeah, but not, not, uh, not the bed you sleep on. You know those carriages that they used to carry the... Have you been into a, uh, into a Moroccan henna? No, but I know what you're talking about. It's like got like four stilts and then right. like a platform. Then, exactly. Yes. Like, uh, in Aladdin, you know, and the, the guy sits the song. Yes. The, the Kala, yes. the princess. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. Apirion. That's Apirion. That's Apirion. Okay. So he made this. He made this. Asalwa Melech Shilomo. He built it from the woods of Lebanon. Amudav Asach Esef, the posts were made of silver. Refidato Zahav, the back of it, the, right? The repud of it was made of gold. Merkavo, its seat where he, he, would, he would lay on. Argaman, he made it from a purple, purple wool, okay? Tocho Ratsuf Ava, and he was filled in with a lot of love, with love, mi benot Yerushalayim, from the benot, the maiden, the ladies of Yerushalayim. And for that glory, for that glory, for that stability, for that chashibut, right? Yeah, when you carry someone on an apirion, you show the kavod, it's, it's a sign of strength, it's a sign of stature, uh, prestance. We say, Tse'ena, Ur'ena, go out, you benot ye Tzion, right? The, the ladies of Tzion, go out, go forward, and go see Bamelech Shalomo, go look at the King Salmon, and watch him with his crown that he's wearing, that his mother uh, crowned him with. That was given to him on the day of his wedding. And on his day of happiness, the day where he was exalting of happiness. Very nice. So, Apirena Salo Amelech Shelo Meatsea Levan. The Gaon says that we have here a few, a few, uh, a few elements. Okay, we have the Apirion, the Apirion, which is this, uh, this bed, right? yeah, the carrying bed. And this represents what? It represents the, the, the foundation, not the foundation, the base of exposure and the prestance and the, the, the hashibut, the importance that was given to the ma'ala, to the madriga, to the connection that he had with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So in order to consolidate and hold on to that connection to that level, he made it important to him. He made it something that can be seen, that can be appreciated and respected, not only to himself, but 
to the people around him. That's the aperion. That's the aperion. And how did he do it? Okay, so how did he create this? It's almost, it's almost as if he, he, put, he put forward yeah, and, and, and identified himself through that level of connection. Now, when you look at an individual, the person has his nature, right? The way he behaves and you have, you have highs and you have lows, and, but you have a middle, right? You have, you have that type of uh, be, uh, normal, if you call behavior the person has and his status, especially spiritually, right? Here, something very interesting is happening. Shlomo Amelech is on a super high and he decides to identify himself on that level. This is how he presents himself and this is how he exposes himself to the people, not as a king only, or not as a person uh, 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 that, is, that fluctuates spiritually, but as a king with a very high level of connection to Akadosh Baruch right? On the level, of, on a prophetic level and, and spiritual level. This is a Piran Asalo. And he, what he, he, did he do it with? The, 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 the woods, of Lebanon. What are those woods of Lebanon? What does that mean? What does that mean, the woods of Lebanon? If you take the word Lebanon, okay, you will see, says the Gaon, that you have the word, the word Lev, mm -hmm. and you have the word Nun. Lev, Nun, right? You see that? So he said, says, says the, 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 the Gaon, something beautiful. He says, in order, in order to express and to find the, the comfort level and the audacity and the confidence to show the world your, where you belong and where you stand when you're on a high, as spiritually specifically, it requires the lev and it requires the nun. It says, what is the lev? It says, first of all, on a simple level, the lev is the conviction, the emotional heart, the, emotion, the emotional dedication and comfort and satisfaction and pleasure the person, the, the person feels on that, on that level. which is a, a conduit needed in order to show the people that what you're experiencing is not just something theoretical, it's something that you've absorbed and incorporated into your essence. So a person has a high, a person is, enjoys something tremendously, right? In order for others to feel it, it cannot just be something personal and something that it keeps inside. It has something that is incorporated emotionally and that can be felt ener energetically. That's the, the Lev. On a more deeper level, Lev is the 32 channels of wisdom that HaKadosh Baruch Hu implemented in creation. It means, the Gaon says, that Shlomo Melech in order to hold on to that status, he needed to spread his wisdom, his knowledge to be more exact, on all 32 channels. He didn't just hold on to one specific channel of, of, of knowledge. He widened his knowledge and uh, as, as far as it can get. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's one, one element, which is really two. On one end is the emotional expression of what you're feeling and what, where you stand. And number two, in order to hold on to this and to present it properly, I need to amass as much knowledge as possible and be enriched with as much knowledge as possible in order to contain right, that, that level. 
And then you have the noon. Noon is the gematria 50, right? Right? He says this is the 50 share bina. This is the wisdom. This is the analytic aspect of the brain. He says Shlomo Melech was able to also use the knowledge in an analytical way in order to, first of all, protect himself from intellectual challenges that were coming from outside, but also from within inside, right? You always have the Yetzarara, and you always have second thoughts, and you have, you, 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 you know, the mind can be very wicked sometimes. So Shlomo Melech needed to be as wise and as analytical as possible in order to protect this level of stability by using the 32 channels of knowledge so I can tap into that knowledge in order to answer or in order to protect himself from his own mind and use the vibrant emotional connection to that level in order to express it and make it as viable and as real and as vibrant as possible. Good? Yes. This, this teaching, if we, if we bring it down to a resolution of our daily lifestyle, is something we can do a lot with and implement in our life. Why? Every day we go to work or we go to Shior Torah, we go to Shul, we are with our friends, you go to Shior, right? And you get a lot, you get a lot from, from that dynamic and surrounding of people, that source of knowledge. You, you absorb a lot and you grow. We tend, a lot of people tend to forget that when they come home on a super high, there is someone waiting for them that, in, that was not exposed to all this. And right. suddenly they have to understand your high or to comply to your growth just because you're growing. <laughs> hey, maybe the wife didn't go through that. The children didn't go through this. They didn't experience what you experienced. They didn't listen to the show you listened to. So suddenly there's this, this almost a discomfort. Like, what are you taking away from me? Like, you, if we don't, we cannot transpire properly and, and convey properly and bring and, on an intimate level to our spouse, to our children, what we're living and what we're, we're, we're experiencing, we're creating, sub, without even knowing it, unintentionally, a disconnect. And a distance. A distance. So Shlomo Melech tells us, be careful of your surrounding, because when you're on a high, that surrounding that does not live the experience you're living might push back because of the, of, of the disconnect and the differences of highs and growth. And you can almost be misunderstood. Mis for sure, misunderstood. And second of all, be careful of yourself from within yourself. You know why? Because you can be on a super high today, but there's always a curveball that can throw you off. Mm -hmm. So you must be able to create an osmosis within yourself of this experience that can be felt, shared, and with your surrounding, and also will be a pillar to hold you on tight, you know, hold you tight and protect you from yourself. I don't understand that last part. The, the part about sharing within yourself and the osmosis. What, what is the proper way to process it? You can be on a high, right? And then something, you can go to a super shield, yeah? You go, it, ah, it's beautiful. Ah, you come out, you say, you know, you take a lot of, risk, you know, say, this is how I have to do what I have to change. And suddenly you get, a, you get a phone call of work and it kills, it kills your, the, 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 the vibe. 
happens? Yes. Very good. This is what we're talking about. How do you encapsulate that madriga, okay, that experience from being torpeded by things that come your way? The, the answer is, says Shalom Amele, number one, widen as broad as you can your knowledge, enrich yourself with a lot of information. Number two, bring that experience to a level of an emotional level so that you feel it in your core essence. Right, so you cannot. You, you you feel it. You it vibrates within you. It lives within you, and arm yourself with analytical tools and a shrewd brain, so that if something comes your way, you know how to take the information that you have amassed to stop any situation from taking down taking you down from such a high level. And empower it with your with the emotion and the feeling that you get when you're on a high. These three elements encapsulates a person from a fall down on that of, of, of such an experience and such a level. Clear? I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. You think so? <laughs> yes. Yes. You sure? Yes, yes, okay. I'm good. Okay. So that's Apirion Asalo, Amelech Shelomo. And he did it, Me'atse Halevanon, from the trees of Lebanon. And what is Lebanon? From the trees, from the strength, right? From the, 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 the power of the emotion, of knowledge, and of intellect. Now, that's one aspect. Then says the Gaon, if you look at the next Pasuk, the next, so, so now it says, okay, now the structure of it, right? This, now we just spoke about the, the bed, right? What it was made of. What is it owned with, right? What is it, what is it uh, uh, embellished with? So Amudav, right, the pillars, the poles, the poles that you actually hold on to that people carry were made of silver. That's one, that's one thing. Then Repidato, that's the, 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 the back of it, okay, is made of gold. Merkavo, it sits Argaman. So here we have three things. We have the poles, the posts, right? We have the, 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 the back of it, and we have the seat. Says the Gaon Medina, this represents three things. The Amudav, the Amudim, the, the, the poles, right, represents the bite. A, a house is made of a few things. It's made of a foundation. It's made of a, the build out. And it's made of a tikra, a, a, a roof. OK? He says Amudav, the Amudim, right? The Amudim is the poles, the posts, the poles. What does it represent? It represents the actual house, the structure of the house. The, the back of it, what is it? Is the Yesod, the foundation. Merkavo, the, the, the seat, represents the, 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 the ceiling. And inside, huh, it's filled, filled with love from Benot Yerushalayim. Says the Gaon Medina, if a real structure, a good structure, 
on a spiritual level, needs three things. You need foundation. You need the, the actual structure and you need the roof. He says, the foundation, the foundation must be gold. What does that mean must be gold? Your foundation will, has to be the thing you appreciate and you value the most. Your, the, the foundation of your emunah, the foundation of your Torah, the foundation of the, of the relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in your house, in your eyes, and the way you, you look up to it and you, re, and you cherish it and you protect it, has to be like gold. <clears throat> this is the foundation. This is the, your relationship, okay? And your approach and the attention you give to your found, the, the foundation of the relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The structure, the structure has to be silver. What does that mean? It means it's still very valuable. It's shiny, it looks beautiful. But it's secondary to the foundation, right? If you have to save gold or save the silver, what do you save first? You save the gold. Refidato and the, the, uh, the tikra, the roof, Argaman. Merkavo Argaman. It's a it's like a cloth, right? It's soft. It's soft. It's a, something that have that is very colorful. It's what you know covers up. It's very colorful, it's very beautiful, it's, it looks amazing. But this is things that, that are volatile, things that can change, things that are soft, things that Things that are, we will say, a little bit more vulnerable. Right? He says, Argaman. He goes into a, into a very Kabbalistic uh, uh, explanation, which uh, I don't think I, I, I should go into because it's, uh, it takes a lot of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, I'll make it very, very simple. There are five angels, okay, that are very, um, that are very influential in, on humanity. You have Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and Nuriel. Okay, which by the way represents the five fingers. Okay, now if you look at the first letter of Uriel, is Aleph, Raphael Resh, Gabriel Gimel, Michael Mem, Nuriel Nun, Argaman, Argaman. The the higher the the the, the roof, right? of your connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu on a very high level, the, the Tikra is very high, right? Things are volatile. This is the, when you tap into the Olam Amal Achim, right? When you tap into the, 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 the interaction with HaKadosh Baruch Hu from a level of, of angels. This, there's ups, there's downs, it's very volatile, it looks beautiful, it's purple, shiny, all great. But this is very vulnerable. This is not a connection. The level of connection is not the type of connection that you hold on to and that it stays stable and consolidates itself. Versus the other two. But the other two, says the Gaon, the Bait, right? Which is the Amudav. And the refidato and the back of it, which is the yesod, these are things that are strong, that are precious, but it depends on how you look at it. It's only gold if you make it gold. It's only silver if you make it silver. 
says the Gaon, the only way you can hold on to a high level of connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you're, the only way you can, you can secure your growth is if you have very, very, very valuable and very cherishable Yesodot, Yesodot, Emuna. What is my Emuna based on? Yeah, the foundation. What is my day like? What are my mitzvot like? What is my approach to the tefillah like? Yeah, the base, the basic, the basic. And it's things that you don't see, right? The foundation, you never, you never see it. So why, would, why make it out of gold if you never see it anyways? You should make the, the, the bite out of gold, right? Nobody really... You know, how many people really invest in their basement except for uh, Brooklyn East Fourth? And they go, yeah. <laughs> okay, you have a basement. You know, make a basement. Make the basement nicer than the, than the, 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 the first floor. Map it off, never. Yeah. No. But that's what, what that's what the gun comes and, and tells us. It says your foundation, do what what makes you and what defines you and your connection to the Torah and to Akalos Bahu, not what you show to the world needs to be valuable to you like gold. Things that you protect so nicely that, that you hold on to in such a, 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 a serious and protective way. This is, this, is, this is what holds your entire journey, spiritual journey. And the reality, if you think about it, people put a lot of efforts and time into the shufuni aspect of it, right? They, uh, whether it's uh, from a tzedakah perspective or from a shul perspective or from questions during a shiu, or from, uh, yeah, we all like to, to show off. That's good, kesef. Okay? No problem. It has to be valuable, it has to be cherishable, it has to be liked. But never take over the, the, the importance and the, uh, the, 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 the first place in your connection with Akadosh Baruch. Ah, you have super highs and you're, sometimes you, you fly in understandings and in concept, and that. no problem. Merkavo Argaman, it's beautiful, it's, uh, but, but this is not what will define you. Yeah? I think we, we, we mentioned it many times, the story of, 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 of the Chafetz Chaim. When they asked him, how did you become such a great man? He said, because I was made of a very small mitzvot. I don't do big things. I do small mitzvot, but I do it right and I do it all the time. To come and do a bunker buster mitzvah and in one time, yeah, it's beautiful. But that's that's the that's the merkava. That's the that's the tikra. Yeah, that's it. That's the roof. What really defines you is your foundation. Is who you are, and not being seen. This is, this is what's important. And this is where you need to put all, most of your effort and attention and precious time. If you have that, ah, at that point, then we can tell everybody, come, come, come watch. Come watch. And we will see that Amelech Shalomo in Pasuk Yud Aleph, it refers to Hashem. Come watch how Hashem resides inside a person. How Hashem lives within an individual. How the person lives his Torah. He has a crown. Like Kadosh Baruch Hu puts a crown on that head. We see those tzaddikim, those kedoshim, kedoshim elyon, and we're in awe of them. Yeah, not because they need to. They 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 want to be looked at. Not because they want people to say, wow, how smart this rabbi is, or I don't I look up big of a tzaddik. Ah, it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. The Shekhinah resides in a place that is properly built. 
So come Shalom HaMelech and tells us, even though, even though you're going to go out and you're going to share and you're going to express and you're going to influence, do not lose focus. Yes, you have this bed that everybody looks at and it's hashub and it's made to be hashub and it's made to be expressed and, and seen. But let's focus on how the, it's really made. The gold, you don't see it. Silver, yes. And the highs, highs, also. But it's very light. It's very, very light. It's not something that I hold on to uh, and I, ident I identify myself to it. Why? Because I know the argaman, the malachim, it not only depends on me, it depends on how Akadosh Baruch Hu decides to use these angels. Not me. This is how you can hold on and, and, and protect your personal growth spiritually. So it's almost like a warning from Shalom Muhammad as you grow. Yes, yes. As we said, yeah, we went from Mizot Olamina Midbar, what just happened? Boom, we give the structure, we give the, the, the you know, what happened, we show how we grew. How do we retain it? How do we retain it? And then comes Shalom and says, but let me explain to you how you really retain it by not losing focus. Ah, now you become a Navi, you're a prophet, you build Bet Amigdash, you're a king. <laughs> Amazing, right? But let me tell you how I held on to that for such a long time. Because the real goal was in the Yesodot, was inside, was not seen. All I shared is the silver. And all the, 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 the big account, the big high, you know, high level connection. This was beautiful, but it was, uh, it was made of cloth. Looks beautiful, beautiful colors, but that's it. That's it. We have time? Yeah, I'm good. Adam, you good? I'm good. I would like at least to, uh, to finish Tzena or Ena Benot Siyam Vamelech Shalom. Says the Gaon, the Benot Siyam, we're talking about Talmidei Chachamim. Melech Shelomo, Akadosh Baruch Hu. Atara Sheiteralo, the Atara is the Keter, right? The Atara is the crown of the Torah. Sheiteralo Imo, that came from his mother, and what's his mother? Not, it's, we're not talking about a, a daughter or, or Benot. Benot is the girls, but it's also, it could be a bat, right? So we're not talking about different, different people here. We're talking about one person and the different connections he has with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the success it, it yields as the person grows. He says the Benot Sion, he says there is, there is three levels of connection with HaKadosh Baruch of, 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 of Three connections with the Talmid Hacham. Three levels you connect to a Tamil Chacham. First, you're like a bat. Like a bat, like, like a daughter. A daughter, what like a daughter? You receive, you receive, and you're dependent. You receive, right? The father gives, the father gives, right? That's the bat. After that, you become ach, achot. You become like a sister. What is that? Is when now the, 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 the student becomes a good, big Talmud Chacham, like, and now he can talk, he can talk to his brother, right? Now it's they are they are at the same level. It's, it's not a receiver. It's now right? brother, I independent. A child receives from a father, but brothers 
are independent. They can coexist. They can benefit from each other, but they don't receive from each other, says the God. And then you have the ima. The ima is the one that actually gives, right? Nurtures, brings life to, power to, potential to. Says the Gaon Mibilna, these are the three stages of the Talmud Chacham. This is how you grow. Tse'ena, go out. Ur'ena, and see and learn. Benot Tzion, you, the people that learn from the Talmidei Chachamim and receive from the Talmidei Chachamim, Bamelech Shelomo, and aim to connect to the Melech Shelomo, connect to the King Saul. In that case, it's connect to Akadosh Baruch Hu. For what reason? Ba'atara, in order to hold on and be, be, be granted the crown of the Torah. And it, how does it come? It's through the growth of learning Torah from becoming a receiver to becoming a mother. You know why the Talmud Chacham was granted the crown from Akadosh Baruch Hu? Is because he became Ima, not just a receiver, but someone that starts teaching, that starts giving, that starts influencing like a mother. Ah, you get there. Beyom Hatunato. This is when there is a Hatuna. This is when there is a union, a bond for life between you and Akadosh Baruch between you and, and the Torah. And when this commitment is made, Ubeyom Simhat Libo, it's the day of tremendous happiness, an endless happiness. Says the Gaon Mivina, a person needs to be able to go and learn and grow and transit from being a receiver to a giver. And that to, to each their own level. You can always be a receiver. This is why we call the Chacham a Talmid Chacham. A student that is a chacham, because you're always a receiver compared to someone else, but you also can be a giver to someone else too. Once you become a giver, once you use your Torah that you've learned, mastered, and passed on, you, Akadosh Baruch who takes that portion of Torah, makes it a crown, and puts it on your head and marries you, that wow. Torah becomes part of you. It becomes you forever. And this is the source of simha. Once you, once you earn that, once you have that, it's your point of reference that every time you will share it, every time you will teach someone, every time you will see the benefit it has of someone, you will have an infinite happiness. This Beautiful. is the purpose. This is the purpose, says Solomon Amelech, from, that, from reaching that level. It's not just to stay there. Say, Senna, now you, you get out, look, learn, and get to argue through your learning once you're at the level. And for what point? To go and teach so that you can become one and appreciate that Torah. This is what Shiloh HaMelech is teaching us. And this is how he concludes the fourth parak according to the Gaon Mivina, to seal and consolidate all that growth and all these efforts that he, 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 he experienced. All this for what? Not to hold it and keep it to, for, to yourself, but to actually give it away and teach it and pass it on. 
so that you can really become one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the Torah. With that, maybe maybe I'll go into it a little bit, uh, you know, further in next year, just and add some uh, some touch-ups in the Gaon. But with that, Baruch Hashem, we completed the fourth perek of the Gaon of of uh, Shira Shirim, at least according to the Gaon Midina. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Beautiful. Baruch Hashem. Beautiful, Rob. Thank you. So nice. Love you guys. Love you too.